usually pick a clip from the movie that I'm reviewing to put at the first of the review, so, uh, what can I pick from this one? Let's see, let's see. Oh, yeah! What's going on? It's your boy, Jay. Coming at you with yet another Splatter Talk Cinema Review. Today I thought to myself, I said, Self, what movie should I review today? Magically, my hand started moving, controlling the mouse as I opened my folder to the movies on my computer. Went right to the horror genre and picked a Nightmare on Elm Street folder. As I threw my metaphorical dart, it landed on a Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Freddy's Revenge. Let's get into it. For years, this movie has been the black sheep for me when it comes to the Nightmare franchise. This is one of the sequels that I very seldomly watched, not because it's a bad movie or because of the undertones or anything like that. I just always felt it strayed so far away from the original that I couldn't consider it an actual sequel. This is the Halloween 3 Curse of the Witch or Friday the 13th Part 5 of the Nightmare franchise, if you know what I mean. So I never really bothered with it. I do remember seeing having a copy of it on Betamax, so we watched it from there. Even when I was 12, I knew something was a little bit different about part two. Just see what I mean. We opened to a bus, driving down a nice suburban neighborhood. Why don't any of these movies happen in the ghetto? Even the music sounds fucking strange. Anyway, the bus pulls over to drop some kids off. Oh shit, look who it is. We peek in the bus to see normal kids all talking and doing what normal kids do. Except for one. Look how stupid in the face he looks. Even the girls are laughing at him. The bus makes a couple stops until the bus driver decides, well, fuck this job, and skips the next stop and drives off into the desert. And by the time the bus comes to a stop, it's turned nighttime all of a sudden, and the fucking ground is crumbling underneath them. The bus gets tossed around until it's balancing on a huge rock pillar. Freddy pops up from the driver's seat, laughing. He runs his knives along the seats, fucking up the upholstery. He gets to the teens, and just as he's about to strike, we catch a boy waking up in his bed, dripping sweat like Finn in every single shot of Star Wars The Force Awakens. But the n looks shiny to me. It looks like Malcolm X before it converted to Islam. Next. Okay, first off, this guy looks nothing like the nerd that was on the bus. Why did they scrap that idea? We learned that Jesse and his family has just moved into the 1428 Elm Street house, last occupied by Marge and Nancy. What? What the hell happened to Nancy? Why isn't that the sequel? Fuck it. Anyhow, his female friend, Lisa, meets him at his house to catch a ride with him to school. At school, the kids are participating in some good old softball with hunka hunka burning Grady up to bat. Grady connects with a pop fly, landing it right on Jesse's noggin. Nice heads up play, Jesse. After the next loser flies out, Grady gets caught in the game of pickle. Jesse tags him out, and we get introduced to the first sign of the movie's undertone. Didn't need to see that. Big Bad Snyder breaks up the boys and tells them to... Assume the position. Grady and Jesse get sent to fuck their backs up doing planks in the softball field. As Grady tries to give Jesse a little small talk, Jesse asks, Do you have a problem with me? Why the hell would I be talking to you about boning some chick nightly if I had a problem with you? He also informs Jesse that Snyder's into quote-unquote queer S&M joints downtown. Only quote in the movie, I'm equality for all. Don't, don't kill the messenger. Anyway... Snyder comes by and says, Okay, dirt balls, hit the shower. While Jesse, Grady, and that creepy ass janitor hanging out in the back of the locker room, chill, Grady decides to tell Jesse about the house that his family just moved into. Oh, maybe that would explain some of the crazy shit that's been going on. We cut back to the house. Jesse's in his bed, tossing and turning. He decides to get up and go downstairs for some reason or another. He walks outside and around the house to a window in the basement. 
What the fuck is going on in there? Who in the hell's in my house? He walks back all gingerly. Sweating like a whore in church, he walks to the basement door. He peeks in to see a silhouette coming toward him. He shuts the door, but whatever wants out is going to get out. Jesse turns to run, and there's Freddy. Freddy grabs Jesse to tell him about the special shit they have planned for each other. Then he peels his fucking head back like Hulk Hogan peeling off a Hulkamania shirt and laughs about it. Jesse wakes up, screaming, Man, sweaty. Jesse's parents run into his room to his aid. He insists he's okay. We cut to the next day where we're in class at Springwood High. As this lame-ass teacher talks about the heart, Jesse drifts off into La La Land. Grady looks at him like, what the fuck, bro? All of a sudden, the big-ass snake comes out of nowhere and wraps itself around Jesse. Shit, I would have woke up like that, too. Fucking hate snakes. Everybody started laughing at Jesse, but Jesse's response is fabulous. Wow. Cut over to Lisa's house, where she's swimming in her pool. Damn, Jesse, you hit the jackpot. Apparently, it's Jesse asking her to come over. Jesse's sent up to his room before he can go anywhere. Pissed off, Jesse does what any normal teenage kid would do. Or not. His magic mic audition is cut short by his mom and Lisa. While cleaning up, Lisa finds a diary in the closet. Lisa starts to read it. Jesse joins in until he reads some shit that is pretty much happening to him. Hard cut to the house. Jesse's room. Again. He's tossing and turning in bed until the lights turn on. What the fuck is that? Everything's melting in his room like the Nazis facing Raiders of the Lost Ark. Why is it all hot as hell in that damn house? Anyway, Jesse gets out of bed wearing something an inmate from Orange is the New Black would wear. He goes down to the basement. Jesse walks over to the boiler and opens it. He reaches into it to find a pair of knives for fingers. <laughs> Plug in knives for fingers, go check them out. They make awesome gloves. Anyhow, the boiler starts and... Pow! There's Freddy. Freddy asks Jesse to kill for him. Why does he need someone to kill for him? He did pretty damn good in the first outing. Cut back to school where Lisa and Jesse are walking down the hall. Pops in the annoying friend letting Lisa know that she got her invitation to her party. Once again, Jesse and Grady are in trouble running laps for Snyder. While in the bathroom, they thought that they were going to get away with talking shit about Snyder. Guess what? Cut back to the house, where the whole family is feeling the effects of not having central air. The bird cage starts shaking. When Jesse goes to uncover the cage, the fucking bird goes nuts. After the bird is finished with its terror, it explodes like a suicide bomber. Jesse's dad blames him. Jesse talks back to his father and walks out. Shh, that's something I would never do as a kid. We cut back to him, sweaty, yet again. This time, he gets out of his bed and goes downstairs. He walks to the kitchen window. Some fake-ass CGI sci-fi lightning strikes in the sink for some reason or another. Then he gets the idea to take off and go to the s and joint. With Bob Shea ready to serve this underage kid, Jesse goes to take a sip and BAM! Snyder's here. Snyder takes him back to the school to run laps? Like what? If my gym teacher ever caught me out doing some dumb shit, the last thing he gonna think he gonna make me wanna do is go back to school and run some laps. Suck my ass, coach. And while Jesse's in the shower, Snyder's in his office, then some shit happens. All the equipment comes flying off the walls. Balls are shooting at this guy's face. <laughs> can't make this shit up. Then some jump ropes wrap around his wrist, dragging him, screaming into the shower room. The ropes restrain Snyder, butt-ass naked, while magical towels fly in to snap his bare ass. Undertone. I wonder if that's how the script read. Jesse watches this whole thing unfold. As the steam from the shower settle, we see Jesse has turned into Freddy, walking towards Snyder. Snyder screams for his life. We get the first kill of the movie and the best knife to flesh slash I've ever seen. Shocked by all this, Jesse does what he does best. We cut to the house. The door opens to reveal Jesse, sandwiched between some Springwood officers. Apparently, Jesse had been walking around town naked. Why in the hell was he naked? He left the house with clothes on. Anyway, the parents bring him in and the father asks what kind of drugs he was on. The next day, Jesse walks away from his mother. Another thing that I wouldn't be able to do. Mom and dad discuss what Jesse needs. 
What that boy needs is a good goddamn kick in the butt. That's what he needs. I agree. Cut to Jesse arriving to school to see the cops there. Jesse and Lisa run over to hear the news that Snyder got wasted last night. See what the fuck you did, Jesse. Cut to the house where Jesse gets out of his bed, sweating like OJ in a murder case in his tidy whities We pan down to see Jesse's moose knuckle to reveal the glove moving. Jesse walks out of his room and down to his sister's room, cosplaying like a jump rope girl. He just shuts the door and leaves her to her business. The next day, Jesse comes downstairs like a normal person. As he goes over to get coffee, he calls his father out on buying a house, knowing about the backstory of what happened in said house. He assures there's nothing wrong with the house until the fucking toaster catches on fire. It wasn't even on. Cut to Jesse and Lisa going somewhere to do something. They come up to this big ass industrial park. Apparently this is where Freddy worked and also did his bidding. They walk through the place. Lisa's talking to Jesse like she knows he has some power to telekinetically feel the presence of some bullshit. They walk up to the closet. Jesse's spider sense starts tingling. They open it to reveal... Cut back to the house. The boiler kicks on. We go through the house, POV, to Jesse's sister's room. (laughs) Oh, shit. Freddy's gonna get her ass. Oh, wait. It's Jesse with knives for fingers. So, Jesse goes and takes a sty-up pill with Coke without the label showing so that they don't have to give Coke any money for product placement. Cut to Jesse and Lisa riding in the car. Jesse explains to her about what he's going through. At school, Grady tries to connect with Jesse, but Jesse is being an asshole. And they ask Grady if he's going to the party. He says he can't because he's grounded. Lisa tries to get through to Jesse with no luck. Cut to night time. Fuck all these cuts. It's party time at Lisa's house. The kids are having a good old time with Chef Cockblock on the grill. Lisa gets her mom to take the party pooper up to the bedroom with promises of a hand job or something. And they leave. And when the cats are gone, the mice will play. The party starts. The party also starts for Lisa and Jesse in the cabana. As Jesse gets his feel on, he goes to go down when, instead of adding that tongue as foreplay, Jesse decides to leave Lisa with female equivalent of blue balls. We cut to Grady's room. Apparently, Jesse has chose to leave Lisa's, who wanted his sweaty body, and to go to Grady's house to chill. Jesse asked Grady to watch him while he slept. With no splatter talk cinema to watch, Grady decides to go to sleep. Just as he goes down, Jesse starts to act fucking crazy. Freddy's coming back in the best way he could, right out of Jesse's body. After Freddy finally appears in front of Grady, Grady starts to scream. Hold up. You don't start to scream when your friend is being split in two by Freddy? Grady's parents bang on the door, screaming for their son to open it. Then, Freddy drives his knives through Grady and the door. We find Jesse covered in blood and crying. He looks in the mirror, but he can't see himself, but he can only see Freddy. He throws the glove at the mirror. Jesse snaps too and gets the fuck out of there, leaving the glove with your bloody fingerprints all over. Jesse goes back to Lisa's, where he tells her he killed Grady and Snyder. Instead of calling the cops on his ass, she consoles him. There's not that much love in the world. As Jesse continues to bug out outside, shit starts to get real. When the hot dogs start exploding, party's fucking over. Lisa gets the diary and reads it to Jesse. As Lisa talks to him, Jesse grabs his stomach like he has to take a huge shit. Freddy must be on his way. Outside, the pool lights start to burst. Inside, Jesse has made the full transformation into Freddy. He chases Lisa around, but she holds her own. Lisa grabs a knife to defend herself, but is no match for Freddy. Lisa tells Jesse that she loves him. Like a pissed off booty call, Freddy pushes her to the side and leaps out to the patio through the glass doors and disappears. What the fuck? All the teens at the pool party go to investigate, then... Bam! Freddy jumps out, wreaking havoc on the pool party. This party makes absolutely no fucking sense to any Fred head. I don't think it makes sense to the makers of the movie, but Freddy is out in the real world terrorizing big kids that are big enough to gang up on him and kick the shit out of him. One of the kids tries to negotiate with Freddy. Doesn't work out for him. Then Freddy says his best one-liner of the movie and possibly the franchise. You are all my children now. 
Lisa's dad comes out with a shotgun to try and shoot Freddy. Freddy, completely against gun violence, decides to leave this bitch and Lisa follows. Lisa drives out to the industrial plant her and Jesse visited earlier in the movie. This place is a pretty kick-ass location. I wish they would have used it more in the movie. Lisa walks through the plant until some bad practical effects care. She hauls ass until the floor gives way. Or did it? Lisa gets up just as Freddy starts to swipe at her. She runs to a dead end. Freddy has her cornered until Jesse starts to fight Freddy from within. What the fuck? Freddy becomes weak because Lisa has become unafraid. Her love for Jesse made Freddy's face melt like a popsicle in hell. The power of love helped Lisa get Jesse back. Shit. It also helped the Karate Kid in the second movie. We cut to the next day. Jesse is apparently getting on the bus. Where did the deadly dinosaur go? He sits with Lisa and her annoying friend. The friend thanks Lisa for a great party. Oh yeah, teens getting slaughtered. Hella fun. The teens talk as Bob Shea puts his signature trademark at the end of the movie. It's okay. It's all over. The bus drives off in the desert. Where in the fuck is there a desert in Ohio? Well, that's my review of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. If you really pay attention to it, even the first movie was Freddy's Revenge. What is Freddy avenging uh, from the first movie? Anyhow, when I was a kid, I thought something was wrong with this movie. Now that I've all grown up, I realize it's not weird or wrong. It's the perspective of something which is normal as I am. Robert England says this movie is the dance between Jesse and Freddy. Freddy representing Jesse's homosexuality fighting to take him over but Jesse eventually finds love in his female co-star or they could be really good friends or they could be planning a day to go shopping and get pedicures and shit the movie's okay and the acting is 80s A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 will always be that subpar movie that deviates from the series but on a real personal opinion A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge would be a great movie if it was a standalone movie if there was no more Freddy, actually, if this was the first movie, it would have been a great movie with the undertones and everything. If you like what you heard, give us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to get everything splatter talk and give us your opinion down in the comments below. Let's try and get the video up to 200 likes. But for real, thanks for helping out the channel and continuing to grow. This is your boy Jay. Splatter Talk Cinema Review. It's a wrap. Shane sure got a stick up his ass today. Schneider's always got a stick up his ass. <laughs> Hello, dirtball.